Um, I went back to her because she did have a fairly Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is while you're watching this. And this is the third in the series of uh, videos about my little dink that I had in 2017. And this is the one about medical stuff, particularly what happened after I'd left hospital. I won't keep you too long. I have in my hand a piece of paper with some dates and other information on it. I left hospital on the 26th of October 2017 and uh, two weeks later I was back on a motorbike. Yippee! Two weeks and a day later I was in the physio for my first physio outpatient. She said how are you getting on? I replied great I was back on a bike yesterday. She looked at me like I was mad. I'm used to that and I said well I couldn't go very far because I had a four-legged walking stick a bit like this one which I've borrowed and um, I couldn't get off at the other end because I couldn't fit it in a rucksack. So after the session where she did sort of look at me like I was mad several times, she gave me a one-legged walking stick, which was great because I could then go out on the bike and get off at the other end. Yeah. Um, the other thing I had to do was get a thing called a slip sheet, which I used when I was in hospital for physio in the bed, and put it over the rear seat of the bike so I could actually slide my leg over the bike because I couldn't lift it over very easily. I still could barely walk without a stick at this point, but I was able to get back on the bike, which is a win in my book. But anyway, um, if you have a bad accident, you have a lot of hospital outpatient appointments, they can keep a checkup on you. And between the 9th of November 2017 and the 1st of November 2018, I was in there every month for a look at by the surgical team, mainly because I wanted to figure out why I wasn't healing up as quickly as I should have been. After 2018, I only had another couple of visits with them, one with the surgeon who did the work because, again, he was quite concerned that it hadn't gone as well as it should have done. But, hey, you know, I could still ride a bike and can still now walk. I mentioned the outpatient physio appointment. I was in there every week for eight or nine weeks and then every couple of weeks just getting more and more exercises to build my leg and arm back up to full strength and help for, hopefully alleviate the pain. After I reached a certain point I could no longer receive NHS physio because they had done all the stuff they are allowed to do. The lady dealing with the medical side of the insurance claim then got uh, funding for 10 physio sessions from the uh, insurers of the, uh, the third party, the one who'd knocked me off. So I then went private. The NHS physio I was seeing also did private work, so I did arrange to actually go to her clinic, which is one of the ones that the insurers uh, allowed, to uh, keep getting treated for the continuity of care, and she did have a good enough sense of humour to uh, put up with me. Uh, she was also, she's also German and she has that comedy allo allo German accent and she's blonde as well so she was very much like the blonde one from allo allo. I don't mean Helga, I do mean hair flick because she did like put me through a few painful things although wet celery wasn't involved. Also for fun and games, um, this is really starting to go into the insurance side of things but I've put it in on the medical side. I had to have MRI scans, blood tests and everything else. Uh, the MRI scans were in October 2018 and May 2019 and they were looking for any remaining damage to the knee and hip to see why I was still suffering. Probably being knocked off the bike doesn't help but with modern medical expertise I should have been in a bit less pain but like I said I'm still here. They also wondered if I had uh, an infection in the bone. I did have what's called a stitch abscess when I left hospital and had to have a course of antibiotics for that. And uh, I had blood tests on the 21st of August 19 and the 12th of October 20, just in case there were any deep-seated bone infections and there weren't. That's about it for the medical side. It's 2023 when I'm recording this and i um, getting on for six years after the accident. And yeah, I'm still in a bit of pain. It's um, not pleasant. I don't sleep through the night still, but uh, it could have been a lot worse. So most people will heal up a lot better from a sort of broken bone time ac accident than I have. Um, so if you have had a, a dink lately, 
and it's all looking a bit bleak. You know, don't give up, keep on with the physio, that's the important thing. The more physio you do, do extra sessions during the day, no matter how much it hurts, and it will all help you improve. Don't give up. I was on an orthopaedics ward where a lot of the people were old men who'd fallen over and broken the hips. Most of them got on with the physio and could be discharged quite quickly and would make a good recovery. But two or three, they just seemed to really want to give up and not do anything, which is a shame because obviously beforehand they were quite active and still getting about. And um, hopefully if I reach that age and do break my hip, I will uh, want to get on with things and not uh, give up. Uh, it's sad when you see people do that. Anyway, that's it for this video. There's going to be some more riding ones interspersed before I do the next one, which will be all about the police case and what you can expect if uh, prosecution in, uh, arises from your accident. So until then, hopefully you can enjoy the summer. It's been raining today. I can only tell it's summer in Britain because the rain is warm, it's cold in winter and uh, stay upright if at all possible.